Hello there, I'm Scotty, you're now, we'll go back to the Smallville retrospective, we are on season one, episode 17, Reaper, it doesn't make that noise like that. This fits, Reaper. Hello. Anyway, oh, the ah, whatever. So, in this episode, we have a meteor freak. Meteor freak in a week gets back, and his name is Tyler, a young man who uh, tried to euthanize his mother, but uh, was caught, jumped out the window, and died. He apparently had some painkillers in his system. And he had a meteor rock on his, on his little bracelet thing he had that got embedded into his skin. I don't know why the painkillers make a difference, but <clears throat> and so now anyone or anything that he touches dies immediately because that's how it happened. I guess I'm really struggling to try to connect. Uh, things with this. Um, in the B plot, Whitney's father has another heart attack. And, uh, I hate to call that a B plot, but it really is what it is. I guess that could be the C plot and the B plot is that Dominic Santori is back, played by Jason Connery. And he is back and he's investigating Alexa's expenditures. Extra expenditures. Which include the investigation into the car accident. From the beginning of the show. So. He's back. Um, just to wrap up the dominant storyline. He shows up in the barn to talk to Jonathan about it. And then. He talks to Lex about it. And then Lex. Drugs his. Single malt. And. Stuffs him in a trunk for his father to find later. That's really all that is. He's there to poke around. Uh, as Lex would, as Lex says, he's there because his father doesn't is he sent him there to fail and he hasn't failed. He's actually doing pretty good. And <clears throat> because he said no to his offer, now things are a little more sketchy, a little more uh, you know. He's trying to. Control Lex's life. Also, there's, another, there's a deep plot in this, too. Uh, Clark and his father are supposed to go on a fishing trip. There's deep plots in this episode. Uh, and I guess it intertwines with the main plot a little bit. And it was a Lex plot, so... Uh, but uh, Cl Clark is feeling he's getting too old to go to the fishing trips and everything. And, so Lex offers him tickets to the Metropolis Sharks, but of course, Jonathan has to say no. He could have said yes. Like, they end up having an argument because of issues between them. And while Tyler shows up in Smallville, <clears throat> having a... Uh... <clears throat> now, I was very confused, because I was like, okay, this is cool, because he's not from Smallville. But then it's revealed that his mom is still alive. And his, she went home to Smallville. So he's from Smallville. So it's another, yet another character who lives in Smallville that we never met before. But they never met before either. So <clears throat> there's that thing. And uh, yeah, he sees that this old woman is in pain. And to his credit, it's not like he's murdering someone. They, they even said she wants the pain to stop. Although she, he didn't technically murder the dog. Cause, but uh, he... And they're suffering, basically. And then they completely make him a sort of villain. I mean, he... Uh, Mrs. Kent goes to deliver some produce, and he's in there. Now, he's wearing these gloves throughout most of the episodes, so it doesn't... Anything. But now he's not wearing it. And he gloves. He's like, here, let me help you. 
and he touches the thing and all the produce dies, which causes her to realize that he's the one behind it all. This mustache guy comes in, this mustache guy that's in charge comes in and grabs Tyler, of course. He causes him to die. And then all of a sudden he becomes villainous. He overhears Lana and Whitney talking in the graveyard about because he's just hanging out in the graveyard. He overhears him in the graveyard talking about Whitney's dad and decides to go into his and his suffering. But of course Clark intervenes and reveals to him that his mother's still alive, so he does this. And that works and kills himself. So suicide, I guess. Um Yeah, this is the first episode that I ever uh, the first episode of season one I ever watched, I should say. So the first disc I run from the library is the first episode I watched. It is interesting to go back and watch this now. And everything. It is one of the better episodes. And it continues that Whitney plot line that's been sort of through line and has been gone. Pete also shows up. Everybody, all the stars are here in this episode. Because even Pete shows up for like a scene. But hey, Pete's on the show. Put him in this scene. You know, at the torch. <clears throat> That's it. And uh, Lex, or Clark, convinces Lex to have uh, Whitney play for the Metropolis Sharks. It's like a practice game, but still. Um, because there's a conversation where he believes his dad's going to die. So his dad's never going to see him play for the Metropolis Sharks. So Clark sets this up. There's a, a great scene. There's two good scenes in this between two different characters here. Four different characters, but two characters. First is the scene between Whitney and Clark that shows you that it has come a long way since the pilot where Whitney has been portrayed as this jealous, you know, jealous jock who bullied Clark. And now they're genuinely, they can be considered friends. He's there, he's generally talking to him about his dad. And, he, and Whitney's like, are you going to have your dad for the foreseeable future? Me? I'm only going to have memories. And Clark says something to the tune of, uh, I'd rather have moments than memories or something like that. Great conversation. There's another conversation at the end of the episode between Jonathan Kent and Lex, where Jonathan uh, says that uh, he's, he's glad that he did this that for Whitney and they talk about and he says thank you and he's in that mission talk about you know I want you to know I dropped the thing why'd you best get it to begin with he's like, a miracle happened to me don't you want to dig deeper to find out why he's like no I just accept that it did and it's a nice little conversation between the two of them that irons out that maybe Lex is not all that bad I mean he's got that Luther in him but you know, he's generally trying to do, you know, what his his offers are generally just trying to, he's not trying to owe anything to, a, to him or anything. He's just trying to help out. But um, I do like the line in the episode where Clark's like, I think we have a new way of catching fish. He's like, new lures, x-ray vision. And you hear the, ha, his laugh or whatever. But yeah, he, Clark and his dad make up. Um... And, uh, yeah, there's not much else to this episode. This is a short review, because, uh, I'm gonna give it a three out of five. Three, I got, I don't know how to say it right. I got a, I'm gonna give it three. Superman logos out of five. I think it's a decent episode, but it's, I don't know. All the ones on this, of all the ones on this disc, I think the last one, Obscura, is the one I like the most. Although, Adam Brody's coming up, so... And it's a more Chloe-focused episode, so... Yeah, uh, so... What are your thoughts on this episode? Let me comment, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.